Mm. Sir, there's a deed of raw power. Draped in romance would convince Mistra to take me by the hand and welcome me into her hitherto forbidden domains. I was mistaken. Of course. I obtained the fabled book and took it into my study. As for what happened next... Here. Place your hand over my heart. Let me show you. All right, and we're back. Yes, sir. I'm trying to find a way down right now. Wait a minute. Is way down? Nope. No, it's not a way down. Well, actually, it could be. I have to talk to her. Okay. Let me actually look at my man's level. How close is he to leveling up? He's fairly close. He's fairly close. All right. Let's climb back up. All right, I see. Skeleton, it's just bones, it's just bones, skin and bones, skin and bones. You gotta eat, gotta eat, skin and bones. How do we get down there though? Okay, I think we're on the right path. So it's that way, but at the same time, I don't know how to get down there. Skin and bones. Gotta eat. Gotta eat. Skin and bones. Maybe this way? It's a potion. Noise. Come along, ladies. We got adventures to go on. Let me actually find out where we're going. Um. I don't know where we're supposed to be going. <laughs> I really don't know where we're supposed to be going right now. It says it's in the lava. So like, I don't know how I'm supposed to do this. Skin and bones, gotta eat. You don't wanna be skin and bones. Okay. Here anyway. Let's go, yeah, let's go. Oh. A shadow heart has something to say There's apparently. Something I want to talk to you about. Something important. Yes. Well now I'm intrigued. Do continue. I could have died in that pod back on the Nautiloid. You could have died, spending precious moments trying to free me, but you did it anyway. I owe you my life. Twice over, in fact. You supported me against Lazel. I may not have survived that night without you. I'm trying to say that you've earned my trust in a way very few ever have. I want that to mean something. I want you to know more about me, at least from what I can remember. As long as I've prayed to Lady Shah, I've wished to serve her as a dark justicia. There is scarcely a greater way to fully dedicate yourself to Lady Shah, save perhaps if you become the head of her church. To become a dark justicia is to become the Night Singer's sword arm, her implement with which she will cast down the unbelievers and win the final battle to restore her perfect, endless darkness. It's all I ever wanted. I prayed it was my calling, but not. forbid me from seeking to prove myself worthy of the rank. She said I was not ready. Not my mother, mother, I should add. The mother superior, head of Lady Shah's enclave in Baldur's Gate. 
Sometimes I wonder if she would ever deem me ready. I owe her everything, and I only wish to serve, yet she can prove... inscrutable. Do you think she'll ever relent and make you Dr. Shasia? I don't know. Perhaps if I succeed in my mission and reach Baldur's Gate, Hope has little place amongst Lady Shah's children. It's an illusion, a distraction. But for this, I hope my time will yet come. Hmm. Well, that was a little nothing. Wow. <laughs> I don't understand. Why be so secret about such an ambition? Justicias are hated by many, judged to be ruthless fanatics. Even the few who would accept a follower of Lady Shah would likely balk at a Justicia in their midst. But there's a simpler answer to your question. I simply forgot about the desire I had until I saw some things that reminded me. Now, I can't get it out of my mind. Hmm. Thank you for sharing. Oh, that works. Who else wants to talk? Gale is positively voracious. Well, let him suck up all the magic he needs, as long as he doesn't snack on a Githyanki silver sword. <laughs> let him know. Let him know. Okay, so this is... The next area here. Yeah. Oh wow. It's quite the area. There's a treasure chest over here. It's a plaque. What's a plaque say? We offer our pain to the Lady of Lost, that she may truly know her faithful. Oh wow. Expedition. Absolutist expedition trunk. It's locked. Of course, it's locked. Can I pick? Can I pick a lock? Bet I can crack that open. It's a ten. I'm gonna, might as well go for it. You don't really need all of it. It's in it. Colossus. Onward. Good evening. There's a person over there. Hey, buddy. Huh? Weary traveler. <laughs> Who there, wanderer? Stay thy course a moment to indulge an old man. May I inquire if... Perchance you retain among your traveling companions a man who adheres to the given name of Gale. Hmm. As a matter of fact, I do. May I inquire who's inquiring? Should it be the nature of our acquaintance that interests you, well, we may safely classify Gale and I as friends. Should it be the nature of your present interlocutor that you desire to drag from the dark and unknown I shall be glad to aid in your quest for illumination and identify myself as Elminster Elminster Omar now hmm. if this answer satisfies you let us linger no longer in this limbo of indecision but settle on your knowledge of the individual I seek wow I do not care yes Ever a man of leisure. <laughs> Would it pain you greatly to assist me along the little voyage I intend to undertake to this aforementioned camp? Mm. Yeah, sure. I should not try to my camp and assistance. I'll see you there later. Be my pleasure, sure. And I would confirm it to be so. Please. After you. <laughs> This man's level 20 over here. My thanks for your excellent guidance. Ah, and yonder I spy. 
I the object of my pursuit? Elminster? The very same, Gale. And a fair bit miffed he is, too. Finding himself forced to expose his best pair of boots to so many miles of country road on your behalf. I don't understand. How so on my behalf? I was bid to spare neither time nor my own self to find you. She sent me, Gale. You know of whom I speak. But mm. why? Out with it, Elminster. Please. Young man, has your sojourn away from Bordity washed away your decorum as well as your patience? Nigh a ten day I've gone without honest fare, worthy of the name, drank naught, but what the sky entitled my thirst. Why, some bread, cheese, and a cup of wine would appear unto me a feast. Surely you won't begrudge me a mite of rest and repast before I get out with it. <laughs> Bro, what? Hello. Yes, girl. Where's your decorum? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, for the love of fine, Talk to him. Fine. I'll turn a deaf ear to the clarion calls with which my scorned stomach beseeches me. Graver matters are at hand. Plenty to digest. After all, a good deal to stew over, if you will. Words ladled with import should be savored so as to better absorb their meaning. Wouldn't you agree? Alminster. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> Let him speak. See, Let him cook. I, um, uh, that is to say... Gail, my boy, I've come to address a most pressing matter. I'll speak as plainly as I can, forswearing the accustomed frills that decorate my speech. I'm here on behalf of Mistra. The message and the charge I bring you are hers. It'd be a great honor to be entrusted by your guy. Must be a great honor to entrust him to God. Could debate you on that. You know where you went wrong, Gail. And I trust you told your fellow traveler here the nature of your ills. I can't say that so far I volunteered mm. the entire truth. Do you mean to say you've never bothered to disclose how dangerous you are? Not in so many words. No. <laughs> then you two have much to discuss after I'll have taken my leave. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Short, Gale, through his own doing, has become a living explosive that could wipe from this world this very gathering and, and much more besides. Mm. His folly, Mr. Forsook him. But now she has decreed he is to be given a chance of redemption. Mr. will consider forgiveness. She would consider what she considers <laughs> forgiveness. Mr. is aware of the misadventures that have befallen you both. She knows of your strife with the absolute, that most insidious of evils. Gosh, I wouldn't say no divine. I wouldn't say no to some divine intervention. It's like the most insidious evils actually go all along. The gods know why are we facing these threats alone. You wouldn't happen to know if a cure, would you? Some all powerful parasite withering spell, perhaps. If even the gods know, why are we facing these threats they alone? Choose the instruments of their will with great precision. Sometimes the single drops we think we are do not realize what waves we are building up to be. Do not discount yourself, and by the same token, do not discount your enemy. Hmm. You must know 
that the absolute is more dangerous than you can possibly conceive. It threatens all who live, even those who are undying. It threatens the gods, the weave, the very fabric of the universe itself. Mm. That is why I have come here to charge you, Gale, with its destruction. It is Mistress' belief that only you can. Kill alone. My sure mistaken. I'll be absolutely destroyed. I don't believe in false hopes. Get alone. How? Precisely. That which renders him so dangerous is an orb of Netherese origin that is buried within his chest. And that, Gale, is how we arrive at the heart of my directive. Hmm. Mistra has granted me the power to stop the clock, as it were, on the orb's rush to overpower you. Instead, you will be able to unleash its lethal combustion at will. Interesting. This could be help or hindrance. There's a the dream visitor. We shall have to see. You must find the heart of the absolute, whatever that may be, and use yourself as the uh, catalyst that will burn it from this world. Smash your chest and kill himself. See what you what you can for a scale to go through with this. We'll be ready for the both asses and get one fell suit. Win win. <laughs> Say what you will, but you can't force Gale to go through with this. That's monstrous. Say what you will, but you can't force Gale to go no. through with this. Indeed. But I think she trusts me too. It brings me no pleasure saying this, my friend. But such is Mistra's will. Yours must be the sacrifice that will undo the absolute. And for your sacrifice, you will be redeemed. Such is Mistress' promise. With that, I've said my sorry piece. I need only bestow unto thee the charm I was bid. It is done. Both charge and charm have been committed into your care. To you, I commit into care Gale himself. I count on you to shepherd him well on this strangest of journeys. On my honor, it shall be done. On my honor, I'm not sure yet I can say the same. Like moons make swell and wane the nescient seas, so too the sky-strewn gods ordain the tidal fates of mortal days. And yet, a notion born in lonely hours, come ebb, come flow, come all that is beyond the breadth of our dominion. Be a moon unto yourself. Hmm. Even the waves of fate can break upon the shores of will. Farewell, my friend. Farewell, Elminster. I'm glad she chose you. Preparing to weave. Hmm. Let's talk to this man, Gale, then. Let's talk to him. An audience with Elminster is never less than memorable. I suppose it's time we dealt with the Hollyphant in the room. You have questions for me? And I promise I have answers. What's this all Elminster was talking about? Well, that's a rather long and complicated story. And what one might call a wizard prodigy. And from an early age could not only control the weave, but compose it much like a musician or a poet such was my skill that it earned me the attention of the mother of magic herself the lady of mysteries 
the goddess Mistra. She revealed herself to me and she became my teacher. In time, she became my muse. And later, even my lover. Huh? You tell me you made love to a goddess. Enjoy each other's company. Body, mind, and soul. But even so, I desired more. You see, no matter how powerful a wizard we mortals can become, we never scratch more than the surface of the weave. Mistra keeps us in check. There are boundaries she doesn't let us cross. Yet, every time I was with her, I stood on the precipice, gazing into the wonders that lay beyond. I sought to cross her boundaries. How exactly did you try to cross those boundaries? I tried to convince her. I pouted. I pleaded. Swore my ambition was only to serve her better. She only smiled and told me to be contented. But inconceivable as it seems to me now, I shared a bed with a goddess. And yet I wasn't satisfied. <laughs> so I sought to prove myself worthy to her instead. We come now to the crux of my folly. Shall I share the story behind it, or would you rather head straight to its sordid finale? Sure, bro. Tell you all. Very it. well. Here goes. Once upon a very long time ago, a mighty lord lived in a tower. A flying tower, to be precise. I'll save his history for another time, but the gist of it is that he sought to usurp the goddess of magic so that he could become a god himself. Did that you, sir? Managed, but not quite. His entire empire, Netheril, came crashing down around him as he turned to stone. The magic that was unleashed that day was phenomenal. Roiling like the prime chaos that outdates creation. Even the weave itself could not withstand the onslaught. It fractured, then shattered, and all magic was lost to the mortal realms. Until the day Mistra returned. She restored the weave, reuniting all its scattered shards. Or so I thought. Until, in the course of my studies, I learned of a book. Netherese tome in which a piece of the fractured weave had been sealed beyond her reach. Hmm. What if, I thought, what if, after all this time, I could return this lost part of herself to the goddess? What was the answer to that question? Was to try. The outcome was to fail. Hmm. I was certain that this deed of raw power draped in romance would convince Mistra to take me by the hand and welcome me into her hitherto forbidden domains. I was mistaken. Of course. I obtained the fabled book and took it into my study. As for what happened next... Here. Place your hand over my heart. Let me show you. You feel the tadpole quiver as you realize Gale is letting you in, into the dark. You see through Gale's eyes, staring down the corridors of a dread memory. A book bound and suddenly opened. Can we learn some magic from this? Pages, only a swirling mass of blackest weave that pounces. Its teeth, its claws. It's unstoppable as it digs through and becomes part of you. And gods is it ever hungry. How are you still Thankfully, alive? The moment I absorbed the fragment wasn't enough to kill me outright. It was only the beginning. This netherese blight, this orb, for lack of a better word, is balled up inside my chest. And it needs to be fed. As long as I absorb traces of the weave from potent enough sources, it remains quiet. Were it ever to fully destabilize, however. You will die. Or worse, actually. I will erupt. I don't know the exact magnitude of the eruption, but given my studies of Netherese magic, I'd say even a fragment as small as the one I carry 
and a level of city the size of Waterdeep. Huh? Fortunately, this need no longer be a concern. Not until I meet the heart of the Absolute, whatever that is.